All right, so here we are with a very short video tutorial that's gonna help to explain to you how to use the data that you collect uh, daily in your training sessions and games on volume in minutes and intensity calculated based on RPE to calculate your training load and then to try to quantify training load not just every day and every week, but even in cycles of weeks moving forward. So. I've organized it into a, a series of tables in Microsoft Excel, and I'm gonna show you, uh, there are four tables. We'll start with the first one here, which is where you record daily volume. We've got a column for players. I've numbered them off one to 18, but of course you can uh, put your players' names or however you want to organize it. We've got three columns for three days of training in a week, plus another column for a game. And of course, in these columns, you're just going to simply enter the volume uh, which is a number in minutes that each player has played we've got a column here where you're going to calculate the average volume for the week for each player and that's again the average of these th uh, four uh, days here and finally we've got something called total volume which is the total sum of all of these days here and, and these formulas are calculated here uh, uh, so for the player average you're using the average function in Excel and for the player total you're using the sum function in Excel and at the bottom what we've got is we got average volume for each day and then an average total sum of volume in the final cell here so that's table one volume let's have a look at table two so this is your intensity table or RPE rating of perceived exertion Again, we've got players on the left-hand column. We've got days of training, one, two, three, plus a game. And then we've got averages for each player. And of course, at the bottom of each day, including the game, we've got the average RPE for the game. Um, in this particular example, I've uh, allowed players to either give a whole number or a half number. So that's something you can do to try to increase the, the resolution a little bit leave it up to you the greater the resolution of course potentially the more accurate that it is so we've recorded volume for one week and we've recorded intensity or rpe for one week now we're ready to get into this big table down here which is daily training load and what you can see is i've organized columns for each day plus the game and then they're split into three sub columns and we'll look at day one here to give you an example of those. There's a column for volume, a column for RPE, and a column for the resulting TL or training load. Now, I've just entered the formula in the cell here so that it automatically picks up the volume for player one, day one. You can see that's J11, and that's up here, of course. J11 is where you find volume for player one on day one. And the same thing for intensity. That's the, the RPE for player one on day one. And then finally, in the training load column, we've just got the formula to give you the product of the volume multiplied by the intensity. And the same exact formulas are copied and pasted for day two, day three, and the game for each player. And of course, then at the end of the table, we've got a player average training load and that's the average training load among the four days and we've got the total training load which is the sum of those four days of training well three days of training plus the one game and if you want to see how each day looked well we've got averages at the bottom for of course uh, volume and intensity like before but also average training load for all three training days plus the game and finally now we want to put all of this information together in a table that allows us to look at the cycle of training from one week to the next so these are weekly cycles and so this is a, a table that allows you to look at uh, cycle number one which en ends up having four weeks just like we talked about in the previous video blogs so once again I've got the uh, average training load for day one and again that's taken directly from the cell at the bottom e52 if we scroll down and have a look at e52 of course that's the average training load for your team for day one of training and there it is right there and the same exact formula is used for day two day three and the game 
And at the end of that, we've got a, another sum function used to add up the total training load for all four of those days. Now you can again use the same exact formula to give you the tr uh, daily average training load for day one, two, three, and the game for weeks two, three, and four. And of course, at the bottom, you're gonna see average totals. And in the bottom right corner, you're gonna see the sum average total. So just one thing to keep in mind, uh, you know, before we wrap this up is that based on that principle of progressive overload, one of the things that really needs to be done is that you make small incremental increases in training load from one weekly cycle to the next. And you can see that that's actually been done here based on the information in the total column. Week one, you've got a total training load of 1,461.5. And as you progress to week two, and then again to week three, you've got some small incremental increases. And finally, a deloaded week in week four. So hopefully, based on all the information that uh, you've already uh, received from the uh, previous video blogs. This kind of helps to tie it all in together and make a little bit more sense of how you can use daily and weekly uh, training volume and training intensity data to calculate and monitor and track training load. Thank you very much and we will see you next time on the Soccer Fitness video blog.